Jesus. Jesus. Got to be more careful. See, bro, really? I don't understand, I don't know. One second, y'all. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, one second. <laughs> coming, coming. It's real. It's real out here. about to go in. Somebody 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 asked me they asked me to go back over something because some people take notes, right? And they said, Pastor Mike, slow it down a little bit. A little tad bit. Because they try. They be taking their notes. They say when I go fast, they can't keep up, right? So I'm gonna go back over some stuff. I'm gonna break it down. Ah, I didn't want to know about the beast because you know you, you, you see it, and it. You see the beast. You have to understand beast when it's talking about a beast. So I gotta go break that down. I'm gonna go run to Nehemiah, grab something out of Nehemiah. I want you to pay attention to Nehemiah. I'm gonna go grab something out of the 10th chapter of Ezekiel, going to sixth chapter of Isaiah. We're gonna tie all this in. The reason why we go into the book of Thessalonians. Because the book of Thessalonians is the second coming of Christ. As Paul writes into the church, he's breaking this down to them. Now, keep in mind, we're dealing with them seven seals, right? Okay. We know that the seals are on the book. The seals have the book closed. In order to understand the seals, you got to go to the seven churches. But we didn't dealt with the seven churches. So coming off of the seven churches, now we're dealing with the seven seals. Now, when we get into the seven seals... I'm going to show you something. The seventh, the, the seventh seal in the eighth chapter, the seventh seal starts in the eighth chapter of Revelation. The eighth chapter of Revelation starts in the 15th chapter of Matthew. I'm in the 24th chapter of Matthew. So this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to break this thing down. We're going to break it down from Matthew. Why? Because a lot of us, okay, since we're scared of Revelation, we don't understand Revelation, we can understand Matthew. So we go in the book of Matthew. Why? Because this is where the disciples ask Jesus about the ending of time, about his coming. Okay. Now, when we go in the 24th chapter of Matthew, verses 5 all the way to 14, that deals with the sorrows, times of sorrow. For Jesus said the end is not yet. Now, jump to the 15th verse. From 15 all the way to 29, that deals with your, your trumpet judgments, your bold judgments. We're going to break all that down. Don't trip. Don't worry. We got this. Now, we're going to go back and we're going to understand the beast. There are four beasts. Four beasts are always around the throne of God. Now, John, in his understanding of the beast, he calls one a man. He calls one an ox. He calls one an eagle. And he calls one a lion. Why? The lion represents supremacy. The eagle represents swiftness. The man represents intelligence, and the ox represents strength. So now when John talks about beasts, he's talking about these four beasts the way he understands it. The same thing dealing with Job, the same thing dealing with Nehemiah. They always used beasts. 
when Jesus gave parables, when Jesus gave, he gave us something earthly to understand spiritually. So now when we see beasts, don't get alarmed. Don't get all upset. Don't get, because we're going to break every beast down. The four beasts around the throne of God, okay. Now, the beast said, come and see. Throughout the book of Revelation, it was about seeing. All that old jibby jibby jab and all that noise, it wasn't about that. Those other books, okay, I got that. All right, I got that. Now, book of Revelation, come and see. God is showing us what's getting ready to happen. Not like Peter walking on water. Not like the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. Not like Daniel in the den of light. Not like none of them 65 books. This book, this, 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 this book of Revelation, this is happening, people. This is happening. This is why after coming up to the seven churches, we got into the seven seals. Now, those seven churches are real churches. Those are the characteristics. All, those are the characteristics of the churches now today. Those churches, every last one of those churches are in the book of Acts. About a month ago, I brought out the map. I showed you how Paul, his first journey, how he went through Ephesus, how he went through Galatia, how he went through Thessalonia, starting all of these churches. Now, when you look at Galatians, when you look at Corinthians, you look at Paul is writing, Paul is writing, Paul is writing to these people that the church he started. This is all I'm saying. Now, I'm going to take you in Jeremiah and I'm, Nehemiah, and I'm going to show you something in Nehemiah. Nehemiah had to build a wall. How many people knew that Nehemiah was going to build this wall? How many? Nobody. Why? Because Nehemiah said what God told him he wasn't about to tell no man. And this is why I tell you all to have a personal relationship with God because it's some stuff that God going to tell you that you shouldn't tell nobody. Now, we going to go in Nehemiah. I'm going to show you in Nehemiah. We going to go in Ezekiel. I'm going to show you Ezekiel. You. Excuse me, Ezekiel used like a cherubim, seraphim, Isaiah, but they always use animals to represent what they was talking about, symbolically, symbolically speaking. Now, when we go back into this sixth chapter of Revelation, we are dealing with the white horse. The white horse deals with deception. We're going to walk through scriptures. Now, he already know man ain't worried about being saved. Man ain't worried about trying to do right. Man have got caught up in so much evil. Man has got caught up in so much wrongdoing. This what makes this what makes it easier for man to be deceived. Why? Because whenever the heart, whenever the heart is empty, whenever the heart is empty, it can be filled with anything. And this is why as we walk through this, I'm going to take you back in Thessalonians. Whenever I take you in Thessalonians, whether it's 1 Thessalonians or 2 Thessalonians, keep in mind that's the second coming of Christ. That's the second coming of Christ. He would write to this church. Why? Because Paul, before Paul came on the scene as Paul, he was Saul. When he was Saul, what he was doing? He was imprisoning. He was killing. And he was beating Christians. So he already knew how these people were rolling. He already knew how they was coming. Until God called him to do the work for him. So who knew better than that one that was tearing it down? Which is Paul. So now, we'll go right back. Let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. Oh, let me show y'all something. Y'all know we, 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 we almost had a year, right? I had a member call me. Tiffany. Tiffany and company. Let me tell y'all something. This is why I don't beg y'all. This is why I don't play y'all. This is why I don't pimp y'all. Let me show y'all something. I had a member. They said, this, 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 for, this for dropping the net as we done came through this pandemic. 365 days. We about to go up on a year. This, 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 <laughs> this, see, when you don't play your members, when you don't pimp your members, this is how your members look out for you. <laughs> look, 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 look. I got to show this to y'all. Blue me. Blue me. Blue me. <laughs> Blue me. Who do this? Who do this? What members do this? Man, miss me with all that little faking and all that little begging, talking about some 10%. This is when you come real. So when I opened it, right? I didn't know what it was when I opened it. I got to show y'all this, babe. Talk all that noise. <laughs> miss me. Boom. Y'all see that? Boom. They engraved. Tiffany and company. New York. Let me show y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. Bit about the mic. Bit about the mic. I never in my life 
had no 300 and something dollar cuff links. 300, man, you talk that noise. Man, miss me with all that noise. Because when you teach people to be 100, they're going to treat you 100. When you teach them with all that old noise, they're going to come with all that noise. So guess what? I thank my member. I said, look, look, I ain't never had no cuff links that come with something to wipe them off with. <laughs> you you, you got to wipe these off once you put them on. You got to make sure that's how Pastor Mike. That's the, they already know how they pay out the coming. But I ain't going to talk about that. But I, I, they say happy anniversary, Pastor Mike. You've been out there teaching us every day. Let me show you something. Come in, Jeremiah. Come, no, Nehemiah. Come in, Nehemiah. Come in, Nehemiah. Don't get it twisted. We're going to always keep this Bible. Come in, Nehemiah. I need you just for one minute, Nehemiah. Just I, I, somebody, you know, they, I need them to understand what's going on. Watch this. Not you, Israel. I need Nehemiah. Watch this. Tobiah, right? Tobiah was a treacherous dude, right? But Tobiah was always trying to come up under Nehemiah, right? Symbolic, well, he was another dude, treacherous. So, so Nehemiah was always around some treacherous dudes. Watch this. Nehemiah 2. Nehemiah 2 and 11 says, So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. And I arose in the night and some few men with me, some few men with me, Neither told I any man, neither told I any man, neither told I any man, neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart, what God had put in my heart to do. What God put in my heart to do. Neither told I any man, neither told I any man, neither told I any man what God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode up on. What you saying, Pastor Mike? I'm standing here. Well, y'all got to follow past the vision because the vision and this and that. God told Nehemiah what to do, and Nehemiah said he ain't told nobody. Well, what you getting ready to do, Nehemiah? Jim Nehemiah said, watch me. Nehemiah built the wall. Nehemiah built the wall in 52 days. He went with all that old talking. He went with all that old jibber-jabbing. This is why Paul said, follow me, imitate me, for I imitate Christ. This is why Christ said, follow me. Say, well, I'm not about to tell you how to be. I'm going to show you how to be. I'm not about to be all that old jibby jibby jabbing with you. I'm going to show you. This is how I go on some real talk. All that other stuff, miss us. Miss us. Nehemiah said, what God told me, that God put in my heart, I ain't shared this with nobody. But I showed him. Why? Because Nehemiah began to build the wall. And when Nehemiah was building that wall, Nehemiah wasn't no respected person. For Nehemiah was high in position. Nehemiah said, just like whatever I eat, they're going to eat the same thing. Just how I roll, they're going to roll. Why? Because Nehemiah looked at them as partners. He ain't look at them as somebody he can be playing. He ain't look at nobody being be above. No, Nehemiah wrote. So this is why when I give you all this book, I give you the whole book, how the whole book is laid out. Not just no one verse, not just no one book, all 66 books. So when I look at Nehemiah, I have an understanding of Nehemiah because Nehemiah rode with Israel. So coming off of Israel, we go into Nehemiah, will give me a better understanding of why Ezekiel said what he said, Daniel said what he said, Isaiah said what he said. So when I get to Jesus, okay, I got that. Why? Because of Nehemiah, because of Isaiah, because of Daniel. All these people already put me on top of what's going to happen when Jesus come in the game. Now Jesus here. Jesus said, do this, 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 and that. This, 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 and that. So now when Jesus come in the game, Jesus said, okay, look, Mike, I need you to go out there and handle them people. I need you to, don't, don't take nothing with you. Don't be writing nothing now. You don't need to bring no money. Them people got you. Just be a hundred with them, and they're going to be a hundred with you. Why? He said, because signs and wonders going to follow them that believe it. Now, watch this. Not everybody, not everybody, everything is not for everybody. Know how I know? Because if you send me somebody that's praying. If you send me somebody that's teaching, and once they start all that, once they start all that, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not about to sit there and listen to all that. I'm not about to sit there and listen to all that. 
Tell me what God has placed on you to share with me, and I'm going to receive that. All that noise, I don't know what you're saying. Why? Because when I go in this book, Paul said, if nobody's there to interpret it, you already out of line. So I'm not about to continue to listen to you already out of line. So therefore, Pastor Mike, you, look, everybody not going to listen to Pastor Mike. I got that. I understand that because everything ain't for everybody. So I'm not about to force this on you and force that on them. We got to respect people for whatever they are. We have to respect people for however they are. Like the old man say, say, Pastor Mike, I'm old school. So a lot of stuff you be doing because stay there, baby. Stay with your old school. I ask you to do. I know one thing. Where we headed? See that old school stuff? I got that. Now let's roll. I got that. Let's roll. Why? Because where we headed, we getting ready to deal with some stuff like never before. And the thing is, like I told y'all last week, it's like coming to work. And I'm telling you, look, boss tripping today. Y'all need to be on y'all game. Boss tripping today. So when boss come in there, y'all already on top of how to deal with boss. Compared to me, I don't say nothing. Y'all come in there, here come boss. Now y'all y'all going at it. When I could have easily put you on top of game. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. So now, when we go into the book of Revelation, we're going to keep going in the book of Matthew. We're going to keep going in Thessalonians. We're going to go in Romans. Why? We're going to go in John. John takes care of what? The deity of Christ. Romans takes care of the law. First and second Thessalonians take care of this coming of Christ. Now, when we deal with the seal, stay with me. In the sixth chapter of Revelation, we're dealing with the six seals. In the eighth chapter of Revelation, we get into seven seal. From the eighth chapter of Revelation all the way to the 18th chapter of Revelation, all hell is breaking loose. From the eighth chapter all the way to 18, all hell is breaking loose. Why? Because it's the 19th chapter when Christ is coming back. In the 19th chapter of the book of Revelation, when he get on his white horse, not this white horse that we dealing with, but when he get on his white horse in the 19th chapter, he put on his robe. This is why, people, let me tell y'all something. See that 13th chapter of Revelation? That let us know what's getting ready to happen, whether we want to accept it or not. See, Rome, Rome is going to come back in power. You know why? Because Daniel told us that. And Daniel have already broken that down to us. You get into the 13th chapter of Revelation, the Antichrist, the beast, the Antichrist, the beast, he's going to use traits of all the empires that once ruled the world, and that's how he's going to do his one world order. Now, 13th chapter of Revelation is the last three and a half years of tribulation. Now, the first three and a half years starts in the eighth chapter of revelation with the first trumpet judgment now church gone church gone church gone boom our first glimpse of the antichrist is the white horse and the white horse is deception revelation six and two Come off of Revelation 6 and 2. Then we get into the 11th chapter of Revelation. In the 11th chapter, we get another glimpse of the Antichrist. But it's not to the 13th chapter, the very first verse, where he said he will come out of a body of water. The water represents the people. And this is the same one that Daniel talked about dealing with the abomination of desolation. We're going to go in the seventh chapter of Daniel. And we're going to walk that seventh chapter of Daniel. Why? Because you got to understand the one that has the little horn. Now, so I won't lose you. I'm going to keep going in the 24th chapter of Matthew. Matthew 5 to 14 are the seven seals. Matthew 15, all the way to 29, trumpet judgments, bold judgments. Trumpet judgments are direct judgments. Bold judgments are indirect judgments. Bold judgments represent when God just gonna take stuff like he did in Egypt and he just gonna pour it out in the air. It's just gonna be in the air. It won't hit us personally like the trumpet judgments that's going to come now. Now, people, all that is going to get better is not. All this stuff that's going to be played out right here in this book. So now, as we go back in Matthew, Jesus already told us this was going to happen. Jesus had already broke this thing down. But he also knew 
that the enemy will come and deceive us and tell us, don't read the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is scary. The book of Revelation will drive you crazy. We see that's a lie. We've been doing it for a whole year straight. I ain't seen nobody get scared. I ain't seen nobody lose their mind. But at the same time, in order to know that one book, you got to know them other 65 books. You have to know them. Why? Become coming off a of Jude, which is Jude, is the book before Revelation. You got to know Jude. Why? Because Jude is the doctrine of our faith. That's the doctrine of our faith. All that foolishness about you got to have now faith, show it to me. Show it to me. Show it. But see, you got to have now faith. Stop lying. Stop lying. Ain't no such thing as no now faith. Why? Because the Bible says every man is dealt a measure of faith. So now when we're reading these books, people, stay focused on the writer. The, you got to... Pastor Mike, let me tell you something. When I first picked that book up, I ain't had a clue. That's why I asked questions. But at the same time, I learned the Bible among men that was going to just run it. Not nobody that was going to tell me no fairy tale. Not nobody that was going to water it down or sugarcoat it. I'm talking about men. So now in this, this is why I give it to you so strongly because I learned it strongly. Whenever I'm reading a Paulinian letter, I understand the writings of Paul and how Paul would write and the words that Paul would use. So when I go to Hebrews 11 and 1, I understand Hebrews, the 10th chapter, when Paul was already breaking down faith. So now he comes in the 11th chapter. He said, now let me tell you about faith. Now let me deal with faith. No such thing as you got to have now faith. When the Bible says, if you had faith as small as the grain of a mustard seed, you good, you good. So, but, 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 let me tell y'all something. On the real talk, it's a lot of stuff that in this Bible, they done took out. It's a lot of stuff in this Bible they have taken out of it. But, 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 you think you will just sit here and read it and run out there? If you just sit there and read there and run out, you're going to get your feelings hurt. You're going to get your feelings hurt. Why? Because every day I sat in my room, I came out my room and ran among them brothers, I got my feelings hurt. I got because I thought I knew. I didn't know. I had to go back and study. I had to go back and study. So this is all I'm telling you all. Don't get in your feelings. Don't get in your feelings. Just get in your Bible. Why? Because you are going to have to know this stuff because so many hearts are empty. So many hearts are hopeless. That's when he know he got you. I told you all the story. I told you the story about the devil's storehouse. I told you that story. I told you the story about the chicken and the pig. You understand? It's a difference between the chicken and the pig. With the chicken, it's just a commitment. But with the pig, it's a sacrifice. For as the chicken and the pig was walking down the street and the chicken jumping around hollering, talking about America have breakfast. Look, America have breakfast. Well, look what we do. Look what we do. Pig, look at that chicken. Yeah, you can holler all you want. All you got to do is sit down and have a let and lay an egg. He said, but as far as me, I got to lose my life for them to have that kind of breakfast. So we not the same. So the thing is, I understand commitment. You got that. I understand sacrifice. Jesus sacrificed his whole life. So this dude sacrificed his life. The same dude that said, come on, come unto me, all who are heavy laden and burdened and learn of me. You think I'm going to listen to him? You think I'm going to listen to her? No, I'm going to listen to that one that sacrificed his life. I'm going to listen to that one that gave his life. The same way the people like to eat sausage and pork chops and ribs and all that. Because that pig lost his life. What we have, babe? What we have, babe? Come here, Ezekiel. I need you for one and second, Ezekiel. Then I'm going to run the Revelation. We're going to run the Revelation. We're going to go in I'm going to go in First Thessalonians. I'm going to show you something in First Thessalonians. Come out of First Thessalonians. I'm going to take you right back into Matthew. Why? Because we need to have an understanding of what's getting ready to happen. This type of stuff, I know they ain't been teaching you. Why? Because they didn't feel no need to teach it to you. So now, 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 that's just like, well, I love my members. I love y'all. I go down my timeline. I see y'all. Y'all behind. I don't even... I see stuff y'all be into, I don't get into it. Why? Because y'all know how to handle y'all self. Somebody made a statement about what the... Let me tell you, I'm talking to my members. I, I'm talking to my members. When God bless y'all to get y'all a little money from these people, when God bless y'all to get this money, do what you need to do with your money. Don't worry about pastor. My brother might going to be all right. The church going to be all right. 
God bless you to take care of your business. Take care of your business. This is what you've been praying for. This is what you need. And if anybody, I'm, I'm talking to my members. What you do with your members, you want to pimp your member, you pimp your member. You want to play your member, you play your member. Because guess what? We've been going a whole year. Church been all right. So now you're going to get some money. You think the church going to be all right? I will never teach y'all to play with God. I will never teach y'all to play with God. Because guess what? If you had $5 throughout the year, I ain't got but $5. Here you go, God, babe. God had more respect for you than here come him with three, $400. Oh, so man, go ahead. Y'all think y'all playing? What y'all think y'all playing with? Y'all think y'all can just run up on me and I'm going to just jump out there like I'm a duck or something? Y'all think? Come on, God, so get out of my feet. God, so get out. Tell you what. Give him your money. I don't need it. That's what God going to say. Give it to him. He the one begging you for it. God said, I don't need it. Why? Where well, you was at them 100, 364 days. Where was you? You had something you ain't know. No. See how we play these cold games in these churches? What you say, God? I like that one, God. I ain't want to go there, God, but I'm going to start right there. I wasn't even coming to you, Jeremiah. But I'm going to give I like, I like this. I like this. I like this. Jeremiah 17. Watch this. I'm going to read down. Watch this. Jeremiah 17. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and who hope is the Lord. The Lord is. Verse 8. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the rivers and shall not see when the heat come, but her leaf, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Why? Because your trust is in the Lord. <laughs> I ain't turning down. Come on, watch this. Verse 9. Verse 9. The heart is deceitful. And above the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? Who can know it? Yesterday. Took in the first chapter. Took in that 22nd chapter of 1st King. Showed you how King Ahab, he wanted to hear what he wanted to hear, right? So since he wanted to hear what he wanted to hear, God said, how are we going to deal with this dude? So here come a spirit, right? The spirit come before God. The spirit said, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to be a lying spirit in all the mouth of his prophets. God said, go ahead, babe. You got that. Handle that. So now we come out of First Kings. We go all the way. Boom. Jumping right there in Thessalonians. So you're in Thessalonians. God said he's going to turn them over to a delusion to where they're going to believe a lie because they don't want to believe the truth. And this is where we at, people. I don't try to make nobody believe nothing. I don't try to make you believe nothing. Every day at 9 o'clock, I press that button. I give it to you. You do what you want with it. Now, at the same time, God said, didn't I tell you? Didn't I give it to you? What you did with it? Since you ain't do nothing with it, that's on you. For the Bible said he gave one five one two one one. One five, one two, one one. So with the one that had five, he, he multiplied it. The one that had two, he multiplied. With the one that had one, he went and hid it. Same thing, just like today. It don't take much, baby. It don't take much. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately with you, who can know it? The Lord searches the heart. I tried the rings. I tried the rings, even to give every man according to his way and according to the fruit of his doings 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 i don't turn it there god turn it there as the portrait sit on the egg as the portrait sit on the egg and hash them not so he that oh man go ahead go bro I, oh you know i was gonna i you know i was gonna tell you people you turn there as the portrait sit on the egg and hash them not so he that get it riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days, shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. Boom! Turn your book, God. Come up. Jeremiah, go ahead with that foolishness. The Jeremiah said, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart. His word was in my heart. His word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. 
when I first started, right? Pastor the mic, Pastor the mic, don't say that. Pastor the mic, they're gonna be mad with you. Man, why you don't do this? Why you don't do that? Hey, remember, Pastor the mic, put your cash app up there. Pastor the mic, everybody else doing it. Pastor the mic, Pastor the mic, this. Man, God ain't called me to be begging nobody. God ain't called me to sugarcoat nothing. God ain't called me to water it down. Just imagine if Jeremiah were a sugarcoat building that wall. I mean, Nehemiah. Just imagine if Nehemiah were to water it. Just imagine if Nehemiah would have treated the people around him low down like that. The wall would have never got built, not in no 52 days. Nehemiah built that wall in 52 days, even around that treacherous dude, Tobiah, because Tobiah was a treacherous dude. He even was coming in the name of the Lord, but Nehemiah peeped him. Nehemiah was always on top of game. Why? Because Nehemiah and Israel ran together. See that Israel dude? Israel was just as sharp as Nehemiah. But see, Nehemiah and Israel was more spiritual than Nehemiah, but Nehemiah had a better understanding than what Israel had. So now, 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 slow, 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 slow. Slow, 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 slow. Don't want to throw y'all. Don't want to throw y'all. How we going to build something when we telling everybody what we building? Nehemiah said what was in my heart that God gave me to do in Jerusalem. I didn't tell no man. I didn't tell no man. So back in March of 2020, when I hit that button, I didn't tell nobody. Everybody jibby jibby jabbing. Everybody running their mouth. Look where we at today. Look where we are today. We still here. We still here. I done been out here almost 365 days. I ain't sneezed. I ain't sniffed. I ain't had a headache or nothing else. And then been out here in all type of an inclement weather. Why? Because I'm doing what God say do. Watch this. Come here. Come here. Come here. I got you, Ezekiel. I got you, Isaiah. Matthew, I'm coming, babe. I'm going to break it down. Come here, Thessalonians. I'm coming, Matt. I'm coming, Matt. You chill out, baby. I need to go to Thessalonians for a minute. We're going to do this thing backwards. I like to do the Bible backwards. Oh, all that, man, all that old noise and time for all that foolishness. Come in, 2 Thessalonians. Watch this. 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Let's deal with the sixth verse. 2 Thessalonians. First chapter. 2 Thessalonians. First chapter. Six verses. Seeing it as righteous thing, see it as a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. That trouble you. Say it again. Seeing it as a righteous thing with God, with God to repay tribulation to them that troubles you. Verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest. With us. Rest. Chill out. You good? Rest. Wait, 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 you good. You all right. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, verse 8, in a flaming fire taking vengeance, taking vengeance of them that know not God, taking vengeance of them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 9, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 9, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction, destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. 2 Thessalonians deal with the coming, the second coming of Christ. Okay, not to knock nobody, but I'm, I just use this as illustration. I done sat in church all these years. And all you tell me was he rose, he rose. Come in another more, few more weeks, eat the Sunday. He rose, he rose, he rose, he rose. I got that. Now what? But he rose. Okay, I got that. You, you've been saying that for 30 years. Now what? What's next? He died. Of course, he rose. I know he died. He rose. Now what? Come here, come, come, come here, come here, Revelation. Revelation 5. Revelation 5. No, Revelation 4. 
four and five. Revelation four and five. And out of the throne proceeded lightning and thundering, voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Which takes us back into the first chapter. Let us know that the spirits of God are there. Why? Because when you go in the first chapter of Revelation, it introduced us to all who are in heaven. Jesus, God, the seven spirits. Watch this. Watch this. Go back in the book of Isaiah. The 11th chapter of Isaiah. It tells us who the seven spirits are. Verse 6. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal and in the midst of the throne and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind stop bag it up and before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal go in the book of job job always used crystal job always used gold why? Because there could never be no peering of glass like crystal. So now, John is only describing things the way he understands it. Same thing, same thing. So how you going to tell me how to preach the Bible? This is how I understand it. I understand this street. I understand it like that. So that's how I give it to you. You understand it like that? That's how you teach it. I can't tell John how to write what John saw. For John wrote what he saw. Watch how he break down the beast. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts. Four beasts. Full of eyes. Before and behind. Don't get spooked. Don't get spooked. Don't get spooked. And the first beast was like a lion. Representing supremacy. And in, in the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man. Intelligence. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Swim. And the fourth beast had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and to come. Which was, which is and to come. What we know about the God to come? What do we know about the God to come? But you told me he come Easter. You're going to tell me he risen. He risen. Okay, now what? What he risen for? For what? Because you've been saying the same thing for the last 40, 50 years every Easter. Now what? Now what you going to tell me? Because I need to know a little more about this dude who risen. Now what? He coming back. Okay, when? When he coming back? Why he coming back? That's all I'm saying. That's how I am. Don't just tell me something. Show it to me. Break this down to me. Give me a better understanding. Why? Because I, I might want to tell somebody. I might want to tell somebody. What you want me to put out erroneous information? What you want me to give somebody half of the story? What you want me to tell somebody that's not right? No. Why he coming back? What he did to make himself come back? What is all this coming back about? What he need to come back for? That's my question. So therefore, that's how we ran it in the joint. We ain't about to come. What, we ain't about to just take what you say. You need to break that down. You need to give me a better understanding. So this is why I teach you all to break it all the way down. So this is why when we run through this book of Revelation, you know from the 8th chapter all the way to that 18th chapter, that's going to deal with all hell breaking loose. That 19th chapter, what they've been talking about, that one who risen, oh, he's coming back and he's coming back on that white horse. Why? Because when we get in that 20th chapter, now that same one who had risen, who have came and conquered, now he's going to lay there and reign for a thousand years. Boom. Stop. Where the rapture at? When, 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 when the rapture came? That's why he dealt with the seven churches first. Because once, the, once God's judgment start, God's judgment is not for the godly. It's for the ungodly. This is why he started at the house of God, which is the church. So he told the church, I know your works. I know y'all no good. I know y'all tripping. I know y'all lying. I know y'all stealing. I know y'all fornicating. I know y'all committing. I know y'all doing all of that. Repent. Repent. 
because I'm coming and I'm going to come quickly. If you repent, I'm going to give you a new name. If you repent, I'm going to give you a nice raiment. If you repent, I got all this stuff for you. I got all this stuff for you. So now if you don't repent, now you're going to find yourself where? In the tribulation period. In the tribulation period. Why? Because the tribulation period is for the ungodly. All that Baptist and Catholic and Presbyterian and Muslim and all that. And the Christ don't care nothing about that foolishness. He don't care nothing about that foolishness. You either godly or you ungodly. So this is why when we deal with that first seal, the first seal deals with deception. Why? Because he knows that an empty heart, he can fill it with anything. A lonely heart, he can fill it with anything. Why? Because there's nothing there. And this is where a lot of us have been. We just empty. We just lonely. We just hurting. So the first one, we go down our timeline and we hear what all that Shanda yeah, yeah, and the Lord say, and the Lord, and the praise the Lord, because I heard the Lord say today. I heard the Lord say today. And you go on this and you start believing that. And then the minute don't happen, now you mad with God. God didn't tell you that. God didn't tell you that. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Why? Because David knew that a desperate man, a, a, a wanting man is a desperate man. See, when a person begin to want, they become desperate. They'll do anything. They'll do anything. So this is how the devil been catching a lot of us. A lot of us been wanting. So a lot of us became desperate. So when we heard somebody say, well, if you sow, 50, if you sow a seed of $50 today, God going to give it to you. God going to give it to you. God, I guarantee if you sow 100, God going to give you that. If you just sacrifice 200, God really going to show it to you. And then you run out there like a cold duck. For what? For what? Did God tell you that? No, that person told you that. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given, and a crown was given, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering. If he liked that, and he really that dude, why he had to give him a crown? Because this that counterfeited dude. This the counterfeited. This is that one that he had told them in the 24th chapter of Matthew about the Antichrist. The white horse. The white horse. Which gonna make it easy for the division. Which gonna make it easy for the control. Which gonna be making it easy for him to kill us. Takes us all the way back to Thessalonians. Why? Because now God is gonna have to do vengeance on what he has done to his people. People. It's that simple. It's really that simple. But yet, I use one verse, and I make all that noise, and put that one verse way up there, and you don't have a clue. You done sat in church a whole hour, and don't have a clue of what went on. But yet, it's time to give. You give, and you go on about your business. See, at the end of the month, this is how the devil going to stand in the pulpit. God said you got to give your 10%. And God said if you don't give your 10%, he going to do it. This going to break, that's going to break, and all hell going to break loose in your life because you ain't getting your 10%. And y'all going to fall for that foolishness. And y'all going to fall for that foolishness because that's nowhere in that book. Show it to me in the book. Show it to me in the book. Show it to me in the book. You can. You can. But I can show you about salvation. I can show you about heaven. I can show you about hell. I can show you about them seven churches. I can show you about them seven seals. I can show you about them trumpet judgment. I can show you about them bold judgment. I can show you about that first resurrection. I can show you about that second death. I can show you about that millennium. I can show you in his word. Why? Why? Because when I go in that 24th chapter of Matthew, come off of that 24th chapter. But Jesus said, see y'all, I already gave y'all the game. See, y'all, understand the parable of the fig tree. Understand the parable of the fig tree. How many of us really understand the parable of the fig tree? How many of us really know that 24th chapter? If you can just get that 24th chapter of Matthew, then jump in that 25th chapter. Why? 
Because in that 25th chapter, see them five foolish brides? See them five foolish brides? Who didn't do it? No more oil in the lamp. No more oil was in the lamp. So when they went to go get oil, see them other five who had oil in their lamp? See them five that went to get oil? He came and got them five. Why? Because they were full of the Spirit of God. They were full of the Spirit of God. Them other ones, they was trying to go get it. Just like today. For he said, even during the time of Noah, when man was marrying and partying and doing all this thing, that's the same thing that's going to happen when Christ returned. Not everybody going to believe. This is why Jesus gave him a game in Matthew the 11th chapter. He said, I gave you the wedding. I gave you the funeral. You didn't want to do neither one. You didn't want to do the, the funeral or the wedding. So now you got to get judged. Why? Because not everybody's going to believe, people. Don't worry about that. Your job is to give it to them. What they do with it, that's on them. For the Bible says one water, one plant. One water, one plant. God give it the increase. Why? You have to understand being a master builder. As a master builder, Paul said he was a master builder. He understood building. He wasn't forcing nothing on nobody. He wasn't forcing nothing on nobody. But every day he's like, here you go, here you go, here you go. What you do with it? Why? Because one thing for sure, two things for certain. See, the brain is fertile ground. It's fertile ground fertile, fertile ground. Once you begin to plant, all it takes for somebody to start watering it, and start watering it, and start watering it. That's just like a child. You tell a child they no good, then now they just start looking to be no good. This is why I teach you all. That no matter what get in your way, don't let it lead the way. Whatever get in your way, don't let it lead the way. Always allow yourself to be led by the Spirit of God. And no matter what stand before you, no matter what you face, you're going to be all right. That's it. That's it. Whether you, it, God have already blessed us. And that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I'm going to give you a comforter. I'm comfortable. Why? Because he gave me a comforter. What I need to do, all this other stuff man talking about. Man, miss me. Why? Because the spirit of God that's in him, speaking to the spirit of God that's in me. All that other stuff man running around, running, talking about. Man, miss us. Miss us. What'd you say, God? Jew? Jew. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Why? Because keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Never let nobody play with you or play you when it come down to this book. One thing for sure, two things for certain. All my members have my number. What you don't understand, I already know y'all going to call me. Whatever y'all get in the conversation, I already know y'all going to text me. So all that other noise they be making, say, but let them make their noise. As for here, as, as Joshua would say, when Joshua called all the elders and all the priests, when Joshua called all them people, Joshua said, let me tell y'all something. I don't know what they're doing in that lane. I don't know what they're doing in that lane, that lane, or that lane. Joshua said, but see y'all right here? Y'all already know how to do road. Y'all already know what he done brought us through. Y'all already know how he done kept us. So as for me, as for me and my house, as for me and my house, we gonna serve the Lord. As for me and my church, we ain't about to let nobody play us. We ain't about to let nobody pimp us. And we ain't definitely about to let nobody lie us to about what the word of God say. Why? Because the Bible say you don't need no man to teach you nothing for the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. So if we say miss us, we mean that with all our heart, miss us. What you say, God? What you say? All right. First Peter, he said, watch this. First Peter, he said, likewise, you younger, you younger, submit yourselves to the elders. Yeah, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud. For God resists the proud. And give it grace to the humble. Give it grace to the humble. Verse 6. I love verse 6. I love verse 6. Verse 6 says, Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time. Cast all your cares, all your cares, all your cares, cast all your cares upon him, for he carried for you, for he carried for you, for he carried for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, 
walk it about seeking whom he may devour. He didn't say cast them on Pastor Mike. He said cast them on him. Cast all your cares upon him. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter, go to God. Go to God. Even when it come down, Pastor Mike, I won't bless you. Before you bless me, go to God. How about that? Go to God first. Whatever God say do, that's what you do. Because I'm not about to never call, come on here and pimp you and lie to you. Talking about God, I heard the number nine or I heard the number ten. And God said if you give a hundred out, that's a cold lie. You can't show me that nowhere in the book. Where nobody even in the book ever played God people like that. But we living in a day and time. We living in a day and time where man could just lie on God. Where man could just say God says, knowing God ain't say that. But I guarantee you, if you check them on it, if you check them on it, I guarantee you, as the Bible say, if you say anything that God didn't say, God gonna prove you to be a liar. But, 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 but. You know what we say? Oh, uh, uh, you can't talk to the man of God like that. Why? He a man like I'm a man. He a man like I'm a man. What you mean I can't talk to him like that? Where that's at in the book? Where is that in the book? But that's how we done played y'all. So we make y'all here and we here. Y'all here and we here. I wish any one of my members would let anybody handle them like that. For what? For what? For what? We all humans. We all make mistakes. We tell lies. We do all that other foolishness. We do all that because we are humans. For the Bible say no man is perfect. No man is perfect and no man is good except one. So why would I even fake with y'all like I'm holy than thou? Or why even even play? I'm going to teach you that word of God. I'll definitely, definitely, definitely do that. I'm going to do what you say, God. What you say? Come here, Ezekiel. Which I remind you, I love you, baby. You're my dude. Holler at Ezekiel for a minute. Wow. Because if you allow your heart to be empty, if you allow your heart to be lonely, here come the enemy. Here come the enemy. Here come the enemy. Here come the enemy. You know, that's it, it, it's like, it's like dude wanting shorty. He just wanting shorty. And he just open for any shorty to come in and destroy him. That's like shorty wanting a man. But she's so empty, she's so lonely. Here come dude, the devil himself. The devil himself in the messed her up. Same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing. A lot of us hurting, a lot of us lonely, a lot of us our heart empty. All you got to do is fill it with the word of God. All you got to do is take all them cares you got. And here you go, God, babe. I, I did it. I still do it. Say, God, look, handle this, babe. You can handle it. Here you go, babe. Here you go. All that. You got to talk to God like this. And you got to hold one head behind and one leg. Man, who do that foolishness? Who do that foolishness? Who do that foolishness? Open your mouth and talk to God. That's all you got to do. I will say this. God will bless you right now today if you open your mouth and talk to him. That's what the Bible said. But then he just said, cast all your cares upon did, 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 Didn't he say, he going to exalt you? <laughs> Ezekiel, I need to get your understanding of this beast. I need you to tell me about an animal. What you call an animal, Ezekiel? Because we need to continue on. Because we're going to run into this beast. We're going to run into this beast. And when we run into this beast, we got to have an understanding. Why? Because Nehemiah said that it was a beast. And the only beast that he was around was the beast that he sat on, which was the donkey. We're going to run the whole Bible. I'm, I'm coming, down. Let me, let, me, let me do something in Ezekiel right quick. Isaiah, I got you, babe. I got, okay. All right, Isaiah. You want to go first? Hold up, Ezekiel. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 6 and 1. Isaiah 6 and 1. In the year of King Uzziah died. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. High and lifted. High and lifted up. As a train filled the temple. Isaiah, how you saw that, Isaiah? How you saw that? Isaiah saw it. Verse 2, above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings. Look at how Isaiah, look at how Isaiah is describing 
the same thing John is talking about in his way. Above is the seraphim, each one had six wings. With the twine he covered his face, and with the twine he covered his feet, and with the twine he did fly. And one cried unto another, and he said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Is not that what John... Come back here, come back in Jeremiah, come back in Revelation. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Revelation 4 and 8. And they were full of eyes within and their rest. And day and night saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, which is, and which to come. It's not that what Isaiah said. Isaiah said, Isaiah said, and one cried to another and said, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The earth, the whole earth is full of his glory. So what you scared, what you scared for? You done read Isaiah. He done read Ezekiel, he done read Daniel. But, but, but nobody is taking the book and tying the book together, giving us a better understanding of the book. Why? Because when you deal with Isaiah, you deal with Jeremiah, you deal with Ezekiel, you, you deal with Daniel, you deal with Lamentations, you are dealing with five major books of prophecy. Five major books of prophecy. So when I go in Jeremiah, I need to, okay, let me tie Jeremiah in with the New Testament. I go in Ezekiel, let me tie Ezekiel in with the New Testament. I go in Isaiah, let me tie Isaiah in with the New Testament. But if I never read Revelation, how can I understand fully what Isaiah is really saying? So now, okay, Isaiah, you already got a glimpse of what's happening about what's to come. Isaiah 6 and, 8, 6 and 8 Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying Who shall I send? Who shall I send? And who will go for us? Then say I Here I am Send me Send me God Send me God Send me God I'll go God I'll go And he said go Go Mike Go Go Mike And tell this people Hear ye indeed, but understand not. Oh my God. He said, go and tell these people, hear you indeed, but you are not understanding. And you see indeed, but receiving not. Why? Why? Because like I told my member Sunday, like I told him Sunday, go, I say, God, what's really going on? God said, you the church, right? He said, I had you in the penitentiary preaching, preaching repentance while the church on the outside was preaching prosperity. He said, but now, like, ja like John the Baptist had to go to jail, now I'm about to imprison that prosperity foolishness. Now the people about to start telling the people about repentance. See all that old cold playing, y'all? See all that old cold pimping, y'all? That's over with. That's over with. That's over with. And all of them that going to try to hold on to it, watch what God do to them. Watch what God do to them. I ain't no prophet, but I'm telling you what the word of God say. For he said, send me, I'll go. He said, because Mike, they telling them, but they're not understanding. They're seeing it, but they're not perceiving it. They got to be able to understand this word. They got to be able to perceive this word. They're seeing it, but they're not getting it. Why? Because it's going to come a time when I'm going to start talking. It's going to come a time when I'm going to start showing them. And they got to be able to pick it up. Can they not see I'm already disgusted? Look how I look. If God controls the season, if God controls the season, why you get one, you get all four seasons in one day? You could get all four seasons in one day. Why? Because God is tired of their foolishness. No more spring, no more just spring, no more just summer, no more just fall, no more just winter, no more just that. And God said, just mix it all up. I'm tired of all that foolishness. I'm tired of all that foolishness. But we don't talk about God. We play God. We pimp God. We lie on God. When we gonna start to be real with God? We say, God, I, come here, Ezekiel. Don't, don't, don't. I, I, you know, Isaiah, my dude. I'm coming, Daniel. I'm coming. I, I'm, I'm coming, Matt, Matthew. I'm coming, man. I'm coming. Chill out, babe. I, yeah. We gonna do this every day. We gonna, man, we are gonna do this every day. This is what we do. We just run the whole Bible. We just run all sixty-six books. A time for all little fooliness, all little playing, all little lying. Watch this. Ezekiel 
prophet start at 2. Ezekiel 10 and 2. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen. And he said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherubim, and fill thy hand with coals of fire between the cherubim, and scatter them over the city. And he went in in my sight. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house. And when the man went in, and when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court, then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherubim and stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud and the court was full of the brightness of the glory of the Lord. And the sound of the cherubim wings. Wait, 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 wait. Ezekiel, you call him a cherubim. Isaiah, you call him a seraphim. John, you talk about an ox, an eagle, a man, a lion. Hold up, hold up, babe. They described it as they seen it. They described it as they understood it. But nowadays, people want you to make you see it the way they see it and believe it the way they believe it. Say, bro, I ain't been through what you've been through. I ain't come up in them ranks like that. So how are you going to tell me how to say something that I'm going to describe it like this. This is why every day I give it to you. Bible, street way. Bible, academically way. Bible, spiritual. Street, spiritually, academically. That's how I'm going to give you the Bible. All that just trying to give it to you all holy than thou, man, miss us. I ain't trying to knock him. I ain't knocking her. I'm telling you how we come. Whether they like it or not. That's how God gave it to me to do it. For as Isaiah say, send me, I'll go. And God say, go and tell them. Go and tell them. Nehemiah said, God has put it in my heart what to do in Jerusalem. And I ain't told no man. So for me to stand up and tell my members, y'all got to follow the vision. What vision? What vision? What vision? What, vi what, what, what vision? What vision? It's work to be done. All that old jibby, jibby, jabbing. All that old plan you. Not here. Not here. And everything I tell you, I'm going to show it to you and break it down in the book. And Jeremiah got those people together and they built that wall in 52 days. 52 days. Why? Because he was about showing them. He was about doing. Not all little talking. Not all little lying. Boom. Here come Paul. Paul said, follow me. Imitate me. Paul said, I'm going to be an example. Paul said, I'm going to be an example. Remember call it Father Mike, this I already know we're gonna have them, baby. Great, 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 great praise report. People just being blessed. I'm talking about being blessed. So now, y'all get caught up on this money thing. We don't get caught up on no money thing. God gonna bless us regardless. God gonna bless us regardless. Why? Because the Bible said that the heart, the heart is deceitful and incurable. So how you gonna make me man look? If it's not in that Bible, I'm not going to tell it to you. But if I tell it to you, I'm going to show it to you. Every last one of us, God has blessed us. God has truly blessed us. And God has given us his spirit. That's God. That's God in us. So now all we have to do is be filled with the word of God. And when we are filled with the word of God, we can lay there and we can share with others what the word of God say. Not all that old noise. Not all that old make-believe. Not all that old lie. Because at the same... Would you say, God? Come out. Come out, Matthew. Matthew 32. Matthew 24. 5 through 14. Seven seals. Seven seals. 15 verse. When you therefore see, when you therefore shall see, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Stand in the holy place. Whosoever read, let him understand. Get an understanding of that. 
15 all the way to 29. That's dealing with your trumpet judgments and your bold judgments. Now, verse 29 is the second coming of Christ. As it says in 29, immediately after, immediately after, immediately after tribulation, immediately after tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then, and then, and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Stop. 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 Come at Thessalonians. Stop. I got you. Hold that. Don't go nowhere. First Thessalonians 4 and 16. For the Lord himself should descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of archangels, with a trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then which will are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Stop! Stop, 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 stop. So if I go in Matthew, and Matthew tell me about he coming. Jesus, right? Okay. If I go in First Thessalonians, Thessalonians tell me the Lord himself should have descend. Descend, come down, right? Okay. So Jesus, you coming, right? Okay, I got that. Matthew told me that. First Thessalonians, you tell me about the rapture, the dead in Christ rising. But this said the Lord himself, right? Okay, break that down. Help me understand that. What, what's going on here? Come here, Revelation. Come here, Revelation. Revelation 19, Revelation 19 chapter. And I saw heaven open and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful, true, and in his in righteousness, and he do judge and make war. Verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but him, he himself. Verse 13. And he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies and the armies which were in heaven followed him up on the white horse, clothed in linen, white and clean. Boom. Come back, Matthew. Come back, Matthew. Come back, Matthew. Come back here, Matthew. Come back here, Matthew. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four from of the and from the four winds from one. And two other. Let's get ready to have him, Pastor Mike. Let's get ready to have him, Pastor. Let's get, what's, what's happening, Bishop? Since he rose, what's happening now? Let's get ready to have him. Matthew, he already told us in Matthew what's going to happen. After he break down the seven seals, after he break down the trumpet judgment, after he break down the bowl judgment, he letting us know at the end of tribulation, at the end of tribulation, 
he gonna get on that white horse in that 19th chapter of Revelation. He gonna get on that white horse and he gonna come and wreck this place. That would takes us what? To the battle of Oma Gideon. The battle of Oma Gideon. So now, now that's the second coming of Christ. This is what Paul would write to the church of Thessalonians. This is why Paul, when we break down that second Thessalonians, it give us a better understanding. This is why he was letting them know in the first chapter of Thessalonians, when he come, this is what's going to happen. The second Thessalonians, he's breaking down the abomination of desolation, but then he letting us know that a lot of us God going to turn over to a delusion where now they're just going to believe lies because they didn't want to receive the love of the truth. Same thing today. Same thing today. It's all Bible. It's all Bible. We can run it all 66 books, backwards, forwards, forwards, and backwards. What that got to do with you being played in church? What that got to do with you running around cutting the food? What that have to do with you hollering? Bunch of emotions with no intelligence. Bunch of emotions with no intelligence. Whenever Jesus did something, he never did it out of his emotions. He did it out of his intelligence. For Jesus even stood in the grave, y'all. For Jesus even stood in the grave, y'all. He talked to God. He says, look, say, say, look, daddy. Look, I believe you, me, daddy. I already know how you roll, man. But guess what? It's not for me. It's for them that they may believe. I got you. I know you're real. I know you're 100. I know you're solid. But that they may believe. Oh, Lazarus. Oh, Lazarus. Oh, Lazarus. Come out of there, Lazarus. Lazarus came out of the grave so the people could believe. Jesus already believed. He already know what time of day it is. Like Nehemiah, it was already in his heart. Like Jeremiah, it was in him, and it couldn't come up out of him. Like Isaiah, Isaiah said, send me, I'll go. But yet, where we got off in these churches, we're running all this game. Where did we get off in these churches with all this old pimping stuff, with all this old playing stuff? Where did that come in at? White horse. White horse. Deception. Deception brings about division. Division brings about control. Control brings about death. White horse, red horse, black horse, pale horse. What brings us to the fifth seal? All of those who had been martyred by the hands of the Antichrist. So now, as I say, show it to me in the book. Why? Because I understand it was at one time when God was saying, how should he? And the lion, the spirit came before God, and the spirit said, I'll go down and be a lion spirit. How I know if that prophet don't have a lion spirit in their mouth? It's Bible. It's Bible. How I know if God didn't turn them over to delusions where they believe lies? Bible. It's Bible. But yet, as John would say, try the spirit by the spirit. So I'm peeping game on that spirit. Nothing else. I ain't looking for nothing else. Why? Because when I know the word of God, I'm listening for the heart of God. When I know the word of God, I'm looking for the heart of God. And one thing for sure, two things for certain. Just because you got a few dollars, God is not about to beg you for it. If anything, God going to bless you and tell you go about your business. It's not that what he did for the blind man. For the Bible says, for the Bible says, and they brought him to Jesus. And they brought him to Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus put spit on his eyes and asked him, how did he see? He said, I see man walking like trees. So Jesus touched him again. He said, I see every man clearly. Jesus said, now let me tell you something, brother. Don't go back where you come from. Go. Go that way. Don't go back in that town where you came from. Go that way. He ain't played a man. Nowhere in the Bible where Jesus played anybody. Nowhere in that book where Jesus pimped anybody. But yet, I'm going to use Jesus to play you. I wish I would. I wish I would. God going to smash me. Why? Because he didn't give it to me like that. What do you say, God? What do you say? What do you say? Everybody going to know? And they say, 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 when Jesus came, when Jesus came into the coast of Syria, Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men, who do men say that I, who do men say that I, <laughs> all them lying on Jesus, who do men say that I am? Well, some say, you know, if you give the church, you're going to bless them. That's what some say. 
Some say, you know, if they turn around 10 times, you're going to bless them. That's what some say. Who do men say that I am? The son of, who do, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they say, some say thou art John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Others say Jeremiah. Others say a prophet. They say all kind of stuff about you, Jesus. Jesus was a street dude. He already knew this stuff. He already know how the gang go. Why? Because he was out there. It's not this what he said in the 11th chapter of Matthew. When the pipes were being piped, y'all didn't dance. When it was time for mom, y'all didn't do the funeral. So now, what's happening? Why? Because Jesus was always among the people. He wasn't with all the little jibby jibby jab. So now Jesus said, who you say that I am? I ain't, I ain't worrying about what the streets say. Who do you say that I am? He said unto them, but who say ye? That I am, Mike. I say you my dude. I say you my dude. That's what I say. The Christ, the Son of the Living God, my dude. That's why you bless me like you bless me. One thing about the devil, the Satan will never cast out Satan. Satan will never cast out Satan. So every day, I give you what the Word of God say. Freely He has given it to me. Freely, I give it to you. See, you go, babe. Here you go. This proof. I don't have to beg you. I ain't never in my life. I'm going to tell you like this. I wouldn't have never bought no hundreds and something dollars cufflinks. No, sir. I wouldn't have bought them. But I'm going to wear them. And I thank the individual that blessed me with them. Because God said, it's only the beginning. God said, this is how the whole ministry going to grow. Everybody going to be prosperous. Everybody going to be straight. Everybody going to be all right. And guess what? I ain't had to play you. I ain't had to pimp you. I ain't had to manipulate you. It's already in your heart. It's already in your heart. Tiffany and company. <laughs> My dude, my dude, a hundred. My dude, a hundred. Guess what? Don't be mad when you see that little blue towel in my hand. Cause I'm, when I wear, I'm gonna stay wiping them all. <laughs> I'm gonna stay wiping them all. <laughs> I don't know what era some of them come out. I come out in, I, I come out doing the GQ area. I came out in the area where dudes was sharp. I came out in the area where dude was said, <laughs> well, we, we, we walked around with a toothbrush in our pocket. We walked around in a toothbrush in our pocket. Say, bro, you step on my toe, say, bro, don't step on my Tonys. Don't step on my, oh, look. We brushing our shoes all day, every day. We walk around with toothbrushes in our pocket. We walk, that, I come out that era. See this new area with the t-shirt? I don't know nothing about that. I come out in the area where we was sharp. We, you stepped out, hey, hey, we ain't got time to be fussing. I'm too clean to be fussing with you. I am too clean to be fighting. We ain't got time for all that. Why? Because we took pride in what we wore. We took pride in how we wore things. I come out that era, and I'm going to always stay in that area. This new era, I still, I, I, before I come out here, I got to iron my shorts and my t-shirt. Why? Because that's the era I come from. Down that new era, just taking it out to dry. You know, no, no, I take pride in it. However I come out here, I got to make sure I'm right. I have to make sure I'm straight. So when I put them on, and you go see the pat the mic oh, what, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Let me tell you, back in the day, right, we wore duckets, right? A lot of y'all might know something about duckets y'all then, right? So I used to wear my duckets, right? So, shorty, I go get the shorty from work, right? So while I'm waiting for her to get off at work, I'm sitting there, I take my duckets off, go in my pocket, I take a dollar bill, I'm cleaning my duckets off. That's just something we did back then. You know, I'm wiping the lens off on my duckets. Why? Because you don't want to scratch your lens up, and we knew that a dollar bill was a soft piece of paper that it won't scratch up the lens on the duckets, right? I come out of that area. I come out of that area, and I'm going to always walk in there. This new stuff, man, I don't know where to get this new stuff from. Man, say, man. T-shirt and jeans. I said, I don't knock it. 
I don't knock. I just don't come out that era. I come out of everywhere. You look good, you think good, you smell good. You look good, you think good, you smell good, and you walk good. So now, that's why I teach the Bible in the same way. Now, this new stuff they be running around here doing, say, bro, I don't know nothing about that. All that begging, say, bro, I ain't about to be begging nobody for nothing. I'm not, I ain't got what I look like begging y'all. I ain't about to be playing y'all. I'm not about to be pimping y'all. I'm going to give you the word of God 100. What you say, God? What you say, bitch? We done? All right. Let's go. Hey, stripping these pigs. What that's about? What that's about? All right, you turn it up. <laughs> you are the light of the world, Mike. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle, neither do men light a candle and put it under the bushel, but on a candlestick and give it light upon all the, up, up, give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light shine, baby. Let your light shine, Mike. Let it shine. Let it shine. <laughs> turn it down. It turn it down. Let your light shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in <laughs> I ain't turn it down. I ain't turn it down. I ain't turn it down. I love when he turn it. Cause when he turn it, it all goes on what I say. Like I say, God says, say, bro, I did this for you. You ain't gotta hide it from nobody. Let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify. And I be in the streets, I be running into all kind of dudes. Say, bro, you, you, say, man, you the pastor be on there preaching, working out? Yeah, he said, man, keep doing what you're doing. Buku dude, why? Because dude's one thing. A man gonna respect another man. And ain't no man about to be running in these churches listening to all the little jibby jibby jab. And we know y'all lying. Say, bro, I ain't about to sit there. Get mad all you want, babe. I ain't gonna listen to that foolishness. But I want him to him up. I can heal myself. I'll go listen to the drone tell me something better than what he told me. He up there without that line. But then you get in your feelings. Everything ain't for everybody. Like Steve Harvey said. Like Steve Harvey said. You watching a comedy movie, I'm watching the same comedy movie. What make, might be funny to you ain't funny to me. Why? Because I'm a comedian. And I understand jokes. And I understand how jokes are played out. So I didn't take that like you took it. You laughing because you don't know no better. But I'm a comedian. Same thing with the word of God. You don't really know that like that. So I know how this go. So I'm listening to, oh man, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. But you, oh, no, 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 it don't go like that. I know better. I know better. And because I know better, I'm not going to get caught up in that foolishness. So as I say, my people, I'm talking to my people, my people. All you could do is share it with them. Once you give it to them, that's on them. That's on them. I give it to you, you give it to them. I give it to you, give it to them. They gonna get it. One water, one plant. One water, one plant. One plant, one water. So just plant it and keep moving. Just plant, at least you planted it. Mom, as you, you planted in your child. Daddy, at least you planted it in your child. Mom, at least we planted to see every day. Just plant it, I'm just planting. Every day I might be just water, I don't know. As I said, we in this together. We in this together. I might be watering, you might be planting. I might be planting, you might be watering. But look how God have increased us. In a pandemic, we ain't been hurting for nothing. I <laughs> Daughter poured him back down. I can't. Let him say, Pastor Mike, I got a new podium for you. <laughs> I take it everywhere. I bring it down and take it somewhere if I need to go somewhere. Why? Even in the midst of a pandemic, God blessed us. Even in the midst of a pandemic. And guess what? I didn't have to play y'all. Y'all just understood the word of God for yourself. And y'all said, Pastor Mike, I'm growing. Pastor Mike, I understand. Pastor Mike, I understand the Bible. That's all my job is. Is to tell you what the Bible say. Street. Spiritually. Academically speaking. Boom, that's it. All that other stuff. I'm going to put my bandana on my head. So if you don't like it, saranada. I'm going to wear my t-shirts. I'm going to talk slang. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to... That's it. That's just that. And whoever don't like it, that ain't on us. That ain't on us. That's on them. Why? Because guess what? When you were sitting over there, you praise the Lord and... We know that if the, when you consume the word of God and we know that God is a consuming fire and because of like as Jeremiah said, it was like fire, fire shut up in my bones. Say, but I ain't understanding when you was coming at me like that. 
I didn't understand that like that. So now I understand it like this. Okay, cool. You keep over there with it like that and let me stay with it like this. Why? Because God want everybody to see. God want everybody to be blessed. God want everybody to be all right. No, no. So the Bible says he's no respect of person. What God do for me, he'll do for you. What God do for you, he'll do for me. But as Jesus said, who do you say that I am? For Jesus said, as I pre Sunday, come unto me. Come unto me. All who are heavy laden and buried. Say, come, I'm going to give you some. Come, I'm going to give you some. But he said, learn of me. Learn of me. Learn of me. Not no man, not no woman. Learn of me. So every day, we learning of God. Because if I tell it to you, my dude going to turn it and show it to you. Come here, John, Peter, whoever you are. Let's wrap this up. The seals, the seals will have the book sealed closed. The book can't be opened until the seals come off of the book. So once all the seals come off the book, now the book is open. Once the book is open, it shows us what's getting ready to happen in the ending of times. This book been written over thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. But yet, who's to get the book and give us the book? For God stood in heaven with the book in his hand. Nobody was worthy to take the seals up off the book. Only Jesus was worthy to take the seals off the book. And once he took the seals off the book, now the book was open. This book been written over thousands and thousands of years. How many people, how many people can go and open this book, take the seals off of it, and teach and break this book down? It's a heavy book. It's a heavy book. Why? Because it contains the whole Bible. Not just Matthew, not just Mark, not just Luke or John or Amos. No, all 66 books. So as God teaches people every day, I'm just a vessel he uses. I'm just a mouthpiece. Every day, I don't know what he gonna do. Why? He turned the pages. I'm, I can't keep up with all them pages he turned, but I know the book. I know where he went in Matthew. I know where he'll go in Ezekiel. I know where he went in Jeremiah. I know where he'll go in Thessalonians. Why? Because I know his book. I know his book. And I had to know his book because I wanted to know him. I wanted to know who God is. Since I want to know who God is, chapter of Revelation, we're going to learn about what? The lion, the bear, the leopard, the beast. The lion, the bear, the leopard, the beast. Why? Because the lion, the bear, the leopard, and the beast represents kingdoms. It represents kingdoms. We're going to learn about Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, Rome. Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, Rome. So as we break all these beasts down, and we're going to 13th chapter. We're going to look at the first beast, second beast. First beast, second beast. We're going to be able to get a better understanding of the first beast. Not to tie the first beast in with the four beasts. The four beasts are different from the first beast. The first beast we're going to learn and see that that's the Antichrist. Now, we get after the first beast that's in the 13th chapter of 
of Revelation, we're going to get to the second beast. Because the first beast gives power to the second beast. Not confusing those beasts with the four beasts in the fourth chapter of Revelation. So now when we see the word beast, we need to get an understanding of who the beast is and what it mentioned about the beast. So now as we went in Ezekiel, Ezekiel talking about all these heads and all these wings. Isaiah talking about wings and all this and that. But at the same time, these are the things that's around the throne of God. And they were describing it to the best of their ability. So now as we do the word of God, a lot of people are only giving to you all the best of their ability. So for me to say or anybody say you got to say it like this or you got to say it like that. No, why? Because Isaiah didn't see it like Ezekiel saw it. Ezekiel didn't see it like John saw it. And John, Ezekiel, or Isaiah may never see it like we see it. Why? Because Job always talked about gold and glass. Gold and glass because he understand he understood crystal. So now as we break all this stuff in Revelation down, because it's all symbolic, some stuff literally, and we're going to take it and we're going to tie it in to give us a better understanding of what is really being said. So now as we deal with that first seal, that white horse deception, Jesus said, don't let no man deceive you. Jesus said, for many shall be deceived. Many shall be deceived. Why? Because of the emptiness of their hearts and the loneliness of their hearts. And because of that, anything, 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 anything is liable to get in there. So now the more righteousness that surrounds you is the more righteousness that will get in you. As I say, only what's in you going to come out of you. If it's in your heart, it's going to come out your mouth. If it's in your heart, it's going to come out of your mouth. Ah! Oh, it's working today, bitch. Oh, you know how we do it, bitch. Ain't no shame in our game. <laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> My dude, a hundred. My dude, a hundred. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But it's long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things should be dissolved, what manner of person are you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening to the coming day of God. Where in the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth where indwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the will given unto him, has written unto you as also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things and which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned unstable wrestle as they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction ye therefore be loved seeing you know these things be for beware lest you also be in led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness for growing grace and the wisdom and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to him be the glory both now and forever and ever. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. Let the might love y'all, babe. Y'all know we're 100. We don't mean no harm to no one. We love everyone. We don't have no, we don't have no animosity. We don't have no ill feel. We don't have nothing to all nobody. It's just that. And teaching this book of Revelation and teaching this Bible it's going in areas we never been in. It's going in areas we never heard. So because we never heard, we never been there, of course some things being said that never had been said before. So now it make it look like I'm the bad guy. I'm not the bad guy. I'm just teaching you something y'all never been taught. So how I'm gonna be the bad guy teaching y'all something y'all never been taught? Because it never been taught and now it's being taught. It's like, whoa, 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 why, why, why? No, no, baby. God tired of all this foolishness. God tired of all this foolishness. 
I, I, and, and I'm not about to play with my dude. He ain't about to smash me, and he is not about to pluck me on some another galaxy. And I'm way up there just kicking my little feet, talking about why I'm way up here. God knows. I'm going to tell you all what God has given to me to share with you all as we prepare to go through the times of sorrow and as we get ready to enter, enter, enter. Us as believers, as believers, we will not see, we will not see that eight chapter of Revelation. The church will be gone. The church will be gone. Once that eight chapter of Revelation jump off, boom. Tribulation, history, history. God said that's the end of history. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. So now God is giving the church. God is giving the church. Even these lying preachers. God giving them a chance to repent. Man, repent. Get yourself together, babe. That's all I'm saying. Say, bro, I, I love you enough to tell you the truth. Let that go, babe. Let that go. Go ahead, babe. Because if you keep playing with God, God going to smash you. Now, I'm going to show up at your funeral. And I'm going to say, I'm going to stand in your casket. I'm going to say, I told you. Stop playing with that dude. I'm going to show up at your funeral. I'm going to stand right there and say, I told you not to play with him. It's the Bible, babe. It's the Bible. See, we don't want to talk like that. We want to sugarcoat everything, and it's going to be all right. It's not going to be all right, babe. God want us to get right because it's not going to be all right. He just want us to get right. I'm telling you. Watch what happened. Watch what happened. Stay focused on God, people. Stay close to God. God got us. We're going to be all right. No matter what happened in this world, because we're not of this world, even though we're in this world, it won't affect us. It won't affect us. It won't affect us. I told y'all, the anointing, the God, it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. It's the anointing. The anointing God placed on our lives, man, we good. We good. We good. We good. We, we, we don't see none. We don't ball none. We ain't tripping on none. But we're going to get this Bible. All 66 books. All 66 books, God? All 66 books. We're going to know all 66 books. I laid down. Got to go see the man about the phone. I don't know. I don't know how I broke the phone this morning. I just... They don't even want to do nothing. Somebody didn't get the message today. <laughs> it's all good. Daddy might love y'all, baby. Let me get up. Let me go see a man by the meal. Let me get my phone fixed. That's what I'm going to do.